Hi, welcome to today's video about red dwarfs, also called M stars. This is a nice example of a M star. It's the closest star to the Sun, Proxima Centauri. 75% of the stars are M dwarf stars, red dwarfs. Proxima Centauri is uh, located at a distance of 4.2 light years. It is part of a triple star system. In the background, you can see the other two bigger stars of the system. Um, Proxima Centauri is about 0.2 light years away from these two stars. It has a mass of 12% of the Sun. Its age is 4.85 billion years, which is about one quarter billion years more than the Sun's age. And it could have uh, three or two uh, planets. Planet B is the most interesting with a distance of 0.05 AU, which is in the habitable zone. And there's a planet D that's an inner planet. And there could be a further out, the planet candidate C at 1.5 AU. 1 AU is a Sun distance of 150 million kilometers. This is one feature of a uh, red dwarf, uh, that's their flare activity, especially when they are young. Uh, you can see the flares go in all directions, uh, some of them will hit the planet. And the question is, um, for a planet in the habitable zone of an M star, how much uh, atmosphere will be lost with this uh, flares? Uh, the habitable zone of M stars is depending on, uh, on their mass, that is between uh, 0 0.03 to 0.27 AU. And it changes over time because the fusion rate over time goes a bit, uh, increases a bit. This is how the atmosphere loss uh, could work on a planet like Proxima Centauri b. Uh, that's uh, by ionization, for example, of oxygen, uh, by X-ray and extreme UV light from the uh, young red dwarf. And the question is, uh, can these planets around red dwarfs be habitable or not? This is the best case scenario how the planet Proxima Centauri b could look like. It's a tidally locked uh, eyeball planet. Uh, you have a permanent day side, permanent night side with an ice cap. The mass of this uh, planet is 1.2 Earth masses, orbital period is 11 days. And yeah, that's the best case scenario. This is how the surface of the Proxima Centauri b could look like. Um, this is the transition zone between the permanent day and the night side. Uh, the star Proxima b is always Proxima Centauri is always in the same spot in the sky, and in the background you can see the other two bigger stars that are further away. And um, computer models show that there should be enough heat transport by the atmosphere and by oceans uh, to prevent uh, freezing out of the atmosphere and the permanent night side. This is a virtual trip uh, to a nearby system uh, of Red Dwarf. Uh, Trappist 1 at 41 light years distance, uh, another cool M star with just 9% of the sun's mass. Its surface temperature is less than half the surface temperature of the sun with uh, 2500 Kelvin. Um, these uh, small red dwarfs uh, are known for their long main sequence lifetime. This star will shine uh, 10 trillion years. And you can see here it has seven uh, Earth sized planets. This system is a top target for the James Webb Space Telescope. This is a comparison of the TRAPPIST-1 system, which is enlarged at the top uh, by 25 times compared to the solar system. Uh, you can see the seven planets uh, from 0.01 to 0.06 AU. The four inner planets, D, E, and F and G, would have liquid water on their surface. Uh, the James Webb Space Telescope has already found, already found out that there is no atmosphere on the planet B, and that planet C is not a Venus-like type atmosphere atmosphere. Um, and this is a movie of the planets in the TRAPPIST-1 system. That's the innermost planet. It uh, looks a bit like the Jupiter moon Io. All these planets are tidally locked. Their orbital period is between one, one and a half to 19 days. They have our orbital resonance with each other, like uh, Neptune and Pluto. And this planet is still too hot. This planet uh, could be a candidate for life as a transition zone. This is another candidate for life, um, another eyeball planet. This one has a bigger ice shell because it's further out.
This is the green planet G, that's the most massive planet with 1.3 Earth masses. And this is the outermost uh, planet, uh, planet Trappist 1H. Uh, this is uh, how the trends were detected with the transit method. Uh, this is data from the Spitzer Space Telescope. On top you can see the innermost planet Trappist 1b as the deepest transit because it covers most of the uh, star in a transit. And outermost planet Trappist 1h has the longest transit because it takes uh, the, the longest time to cross the star's disk. And uh, since it's further away, it's uh, better uh, transit. This is the interior of the Trappist 1 exoplanets, how they could look like. At the left, um, could be a be planets without a core where, where the rocky surface um, where the iron is mixed with other elements in the interior or they could be more like earth with a rocky surface but the iron rich core or they could have a bigger iron core and a, a rocky surface um, and on top a deep ocean this is our artist's impression of how a trappist one planet the surface could look like and the question is, um, is it possible uh, to make photosynthesis on such a planet and um, life forms exist on such a planet? And since the stars all, at all times in the sky, would they go into hibernation or not? These are very interesting questions. There's another star, um, Red Dwarf, uh, nearby. Barnard star, also called Barnard's Arrow star. Is at the distance of six light years from the Earth, it has 16% of the Sun's mass. Its age is 10 billion years, so it's more than uh, double the age of the Sun. Its rotation period is 145 days because it has uh, lost momentum over time to the stellar winds. Since it's uh, so old, uh, it, the metallicity of the star is uh, one tenth to one third of the Sun. Uh, metallicity means the percentage of elements other than hydrogen and helium. And in this move, you can see the movement of the star from 1985 to 2005. It has a high relative velocity of 143 kilometers per second. This is the motion of the stars relative to the sun. Uh, you can see the, see the individual orbits of the stars. And today, this Proxima Centauri and Alpha Centauri, these are the closest stars uh, to the sun. This uh, x axis is time, y axis distance. And you can see in about 10,000 years, a Barnard star will approach the Sun to 3.75 light years. In 30,000 30, years, another M star, Ross 248, will approach the Sun to about 3 light years. And eventually all the stars will drift away and others will approach the Sun. This is an example of a binary of red dwarfs, that's Leuton 7268, also called Gliese 65, at a distance of 8.7 light years. It was discovered in 1948 by Wilhelm Jakob Leuten. The binary of low mass red dwarfs with 12% of the ma mass of the Sun. Their orbital period is 26.5 years. And these two stars are known to be variable flare stars. It's another very interesting system that's Kepler 80 at a 1200 light years distance. This is a heavy M star at the top limit of um, red dwarfs and with a mass of 73% of the Sun. Luminosity is 17% of the Sun. This red dwarf has six planets at 0.02 to 0.14 AU. They are too close to have life. And current theory is the um, migration theory, so these planets were formed further outside and then migrated inwards. And one of the planets is uh, very interesting, this Kepler ATG, because it was found uh, via new technique of AI and deep learning. This is an interesting diagram, a predicted main sequence lifetime in uh, y-axis versus mass of a red dwarf. These are all uh, low mass red dwarfs. And you can see um, the range of, of hundreds of uh, billions of years to over 10 trillion years for the uh, lowest mass uh, red dwarfs. For comparison, the age of the universe is 13.8 billion years. This is what uh, will become of um, the low mass M dwarfs uh, with a size of mass of 6 to 25% of the Sun. A 
after they run out of hydrogen, they will become blue dwarfs. Um, the main sequence lifetime is at least one trillion years. That's much bigger than the age of the universe. Just, so there is no uh, blue dwarf yet formed. Eventually, all um, red dwarfs uh, become white dwarf. Will become white dwarfs. The white dwarfs have a, typically a um, size of the Earth and uh, opaque. Takes them, uh, it takes more than 1 billion years for them to cool down to black dwarfs. I have made a video about white dwarfs. You can check it out if you're interested. But that's the future of the red dwarf star. This is uh, a nice animation of the nearby brown dwarf system, uh, Lumen 16. The brown dwarf binary at 6.5 light years distance. Um, one of the brown dwarfs is uh, L-type with 34 Jupiter masses. The other one, this in the picture, is uh, B-type, a uh, B. Human 16b, uh, E-type is 29 Jupiter masses. So the star formation in the universe uh, from hydrogen uh, by collapse of gas clouds will continue for 100 trillion years. Then there will be no more uh, hydrogen left. Uh, but there's another mechanism that's the merger of heavy brown dwarfs um, that will make po uh, 50 red dwarfs in the entire galaxy possible, according to a estimation for a period of 10 to the 17 to 10 to the 18 years. For this to work, you need a heavy uh, brown dwarfs because their combined mass must be over the limit of 80 Jupiter masses. And these were 50 dwarfs uh, will be the last uh, stars in the Milky Way or the Milky Comita galaxy. And that's the far future, uh, according to today's knowledge of the uh, red dwarfs and uh, of the universe and the galaxies. And that was today's video about the red dwarfs, M stars, the fascinating stars like Proxima Centauri, Trappist 1, Barnard stars. And you can check out the uh, links to the scientific papers in the description field. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day. Bye bye.